self-esteem is a load of crap. He goes, Jesus died for you specifically. You, you were on the list. What else, what else do you need? You know, what else do you <laughs> yeah, need to be, yeah. on, you know, to make you feel like you're worth something? You know, yeah. that someone already died on your behalf. You know, and like I said, you know, it's it's hard to grasp that that whole the whole concept and really understand what that means. But even a little bit is enough to go. I'm worth something. Well, you know, and yeah. I think I think actually it's it's the reason Christ becomes important or is important in these in this type of situation. Because I think what some people could say, well, you know. What does religion have to do with this, with people connecting, with with people feeling valued? Um, and I think the the benefit of that really is is within within Jesus Christ, your life is always in the proper perspective. Mm-hmm. He holds the proper perspective of your life, regardless of whether the whole world does not. Right. You know, the whole world. Uh, you know, you think of of people who are wrongly accused of ridiculous things and are in prison, and they're you know, their parents think they're monsters, their kids think they're monsters, every, you know, society thinks they're monsters, and they could, could be completely innocent. Who who has the correct perspective on their life? Jesus Christ does. You know what I'm saying? And I can be comforted in the fact that regardless of, of how many fallible humans have my life, the wrong version of my life in their head and within their judgment, my life is in the proper perspective when I see it through Jesus' eyes. When, he looks, when God looks at me and he sees Christ, um, because I've recognized um, his saving me and, and and the perfection of his grace. Like, that's what I look like to God. And if I can understand that, then I'm at least dwelling in the right perspective. It's tough to, to be living with that perspective in mind and then come up with the solution of it's time to go. Yeah. That, that is the ultimate act of faithlessness. God is not big enough to take care of my pain, to cure my problems. I don't know if I believe God can handle this. Right. I'll go ahead and take care of it. Well, you know, but I mean, that's that, that's a I don't know a different thing to say too, though. So I mean, you know, like I go through that on a day to day basis, but I don't go through it to that extreme. Right. You know, like right. like I'll take my problems away from God and say I got this one. You know, right. Don't worry about it. You know, but that doesn't. You know, I, I guess I guess once again it goes back to your perspective on on how things are going. You know, like when you have your uh, when you're getting ready to sell your house. Uh, you call an assessor because you standing out in your front yard and going, yeah, this place is worth uh, seventy five grand at least. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> it, that doesn't mean anything. You have no, right. you're not the guy assigning value here. You know, right. and so you go to the source and you get somebody that knows what they're doing, uh, aka metaphor Jesus, <laughs> and says, uh, I will take care of your value around here. Yeah. I say you're worth it. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. don't worry, don't you're, worry you're worth it. my blood. Yeah. So, uh, and I've already paid for it, so don't even exactly. worry about it. Exactly. No taxes or nothing. <laughs> Man, that's good. So I, I, I don't know. It's a uh, it's it, it it's like the the whole thing the reason it's such a big deal is because the act itself has a ripple effect like you just wouldn't believe you know well yeah. i mean like you would believe <laughs> you know but i mean it's it just it, it the, the person itself is the big is the rock into the pool and then the ripple effect is just everybody that you've ever met every 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 person that that that, that person has ever met will go oh man yeah, you know, it's not like a like a a car accident or you know a, a heart attack or you know they're like, oh that's too bad you know like someone made a conscious decision to say I never want to be here anymore right you know that's that's a that's a real heavy thought. Well, and it not only affects the the person who has met you, but I think it affects people who haven't met you. You can get into a cycle of well it worked for that person. I don't know who they were, but that seemed like a good solution for them. They don't know the story, they don't know the details. Maybe I'll go ahead and follow too. And pretty soon you have a whole line of people following that example. Yeah, and saying? there was actually a rash of that kind of thing going on at the, like a local high school, you know, over sure. over the past couple of 3 years that it's been, you know, a big deal, you know, and they mm-hmm. and they bring in psychologists and then they, you know, they have days and you know, they say anybody wants to talk to anybody, you know, let's just talk, you know, yeah. anybody, let's talk about anything. You know, and but, that stuff. What do you do? Yeah. You know. What do you do? H- how do you say stop it? Yeah. You're not helping yourself. I, I, how do you? That's the thing. Is 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 when it all boils down to the black and white. You know. I, I mean, maybe it's something that we already said too. Is like, how do you convince somebody? Say, look, you're worth something to me. You're worth something to uh, to Jesus. You're you're worth something to a lot of people. You right. know. How can how can I talk you out of this? What can I do? Can I do anything? You know. I don't. I, I. I don't know. I think that. I think that's the part of the helplessness of being, you know, the sidecar. You know, the guy on the side, or you know, the husband, the wife, the kids, whatever. You know, whoever's left. You know, the helplessness of being those people going. 
you know, what, what, what can I do, you know, in the throes of it, not after it's happened, but you know, when you know, you know, when it's been, it's been tried before and mm-hmm. then it kind of got better and then it gets tried again. And you're like, you know, what, 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 what? Well, and, and I think as a culture, we will do dis- er, disservice to people who are considering suicide when they look at people from the past who have done it because mostly because we get our emotions evolved and how to, how can't we you know we're, we're hurting for people we're hurting for the family that's left behind we're, we're hurting for the person who did that and and you hear a lot of people say oh they're at peace now right okay and you think well that makes us feel really good but that also ma- tells me wow my life's in pain and i want peace i'll just do what they did right there's no consequences and you know you look at it biblically and i've i've, I've been all over the page on, on this i used to be pretty hard i had a had a discussion last night with the family. It was a pretty, it was a pretty harsh discussion. They said, "Okay, uh, where's our family member? What do you think? Where do you believe?" And they, they said, "What does your religion teach?" Which you know, and then they use keywords and like, "Well, our religion really doesn't mean a whole lot," you know. Right. So, what does what does the Bible say? And uh, and I explain, I, I, I've uh, have had a pretty hard line. How can you take the ultimate gift that God has given you, life, and there's a very last act of breath? You say to him, shove it, God, no thanks, I didn't like it, you can have it back. And expect to be ushered into his presence with celebration. Like, oh, that was a good choice, that was awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's a pretty hard line. And I, and I and that's pretty hard to say to a family who's sitting there grieving someone who's just done that. <laughs> yeah, I, but I, I, I want you to know this is harsh. Okay? Yeah. Um, now also, I explained to them, and, I, and this is a, a process I've had the last few years, because notice earlier I said, a person in their right mind. Right? Yeah. You know, and then maybe it's just because I've gotten older. Maybe it's because I've experienced people who have tried and not succeeded and had conversations to kind of see where they're at. Maybe it's because I've seen enough commercials that uh, are, are talking about uh, a lot of these um, medications you take for mental illness. What, what's one of the side benefits usually of it? Oh, it might cause suicide. Right. Yeah. And I've talked to a lot of people who've been on these medications. And again, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a... Uh, I'm talking somewhat ignorantly other than an observer. Yeah. And the conversations I've had with them when no one else is in the room, and it's just them and I, and I'm saying, okay, tell me really, what, what's going on? You know, do, do you understand you're, you're, ask, you're, you're inviting yourself into the throne room of God? Is this how you want to go to God? Okay, heart and heart right, to, to someone who just tried the day before. And the people who I've talked to who have been on some of these medications for, for a number of time and it's messing with them, Usually, honestly, in their heart of hearts, they're thinking, "Oh no, this was this was this was for my family." I mean, they honestly think, "No, this is like, this is the best possible." Right, thing. I've become a burden, or I'm a burden, or I mean, it's not like shove it, God, you know, which is yeah, the, the, the opinion I was coming at it. Yeah, from. right. And so that's kind of changed my my heart a little bit. And I and I, mean, I hope it's not just because I want to feel good, right? You know, because because I have to guard myself of that too. I don't want to just make people feel happy. Um, I honestly think, I, I'm honestly glad I'm not God and God is. Right. God's the one who knows exactly what's going on in their heart, exactly what's going on in their mind, and he's the one who will judge, and he's the one who will decide. And so when people ask me, well, are they in heaven or hell, I, I can't answer that. Right. I, it's not a black and white answer. Yeah. Um, no, well, I, you know, and, and it's 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 a lot of the, the, the black and white line thing, you know. And I was reading a verse, and for the life of me, I do this all the time. I see a verse that I like, I think fits in completely appropriately and I don't write it down but I remember like half of it but uh, uh, it had to do with you know uh, man I wish I could remember but it it had to do with uh, narrowly escaping through the fire of hell to get to heaven you know and and it's gotcha yeah you know what verse I'm getting after you know basically the the, the thought was is like you know you may still make it to heaven you may not you know but that's how you want to get there by the skin of your teeth you know barely you know, army crawling up to the gates, you know, and so I, I, I can't remember what exactly verse verse that it was, but it's just like you know, barely, barely sneaking your way in. Well, and my thought is, okay, let's say it's let's say it's really great odds. Let's say it's a fifty fifty chance. Okay, that, that's, that's that's like great. Maybe, maybe not. Are you really going to risk eternity? Okay, you got this. It, it's a what did someone say the other day? It is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Okay. You've got this pain in your life. It seems horrible and it seems awful, but it's a temporary. No matter what, it is temporary. Do you really want to risk? If we can't 
even us really decide what do we think the Bible says. Right. Yeah. You get three experts in a room. I mean, we're not experts. I'm not real experts in a room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I better clarify. <laughs> Shooting <Yeah. little. laughs> Well, you know me. <laughs> you know, and they're not gonna gonna agree. You know, are you? Are, who are you gonna really? You're gonna you're gonna gamble that. You're gonna hope. Well, I just really hope I get to go to heaven. Yeah. I, I'm personally not. I don't care how bad it gets in my life. I'm not willing to make that risk. It's a perspective that says 10,000 years from the day, no matter what I'm going through, I'm not going to care. Yeah. Life is a vapor. Scripture says the vapor is a, it's a man, a blink of the eye and you're gone. I'm, I'm here, been here 46 years now. It's kind of crazy. I, I, I still feel like I'm 22, okay? But my body's, yeah, no, you're 46, you know? And um, be, I'm going to snap my fingers. I'm going to be 86 if I make it that long. And, and it's going to be over, you know? I'm, I'm thinking about 10,000 years from today, n- not... Man, I don't know. That that's that's. I'm in a lot of pain. That's what helps me. Yeah. That's what helps me. Well, 